Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. We're going to be covering a little bit more on TD5s and discoveries. And what I'd like to do is for you guys to join in and help diagnose the problem on this vehicle. Okay, so basically she's a non-starter. She'll crank, but she won't fire at all. Not a good situation to be in. Okay, so basically I'll give you the heads up in this video. This did have a, a complete service, including filters. And then afterwards, when it wouldn't start, we found that it had oil in the loom. You can see here that it's um, quite influxed with oil. We changed the injector loom anyway, because this needed doing. So it's got a brand new injector loom on it. If you haven't seen the video, then click on the link that's shown below this video and you can go through to it. Unfortunately, DTCs or uh, trouble codes are not exhaustively uh, right, especially with older engines. But what we're looking for, first of all, to see what sort of issues we had, which basically these two, first of all, fuel temperature sender. Now, this one here is on the pressure regulator. You can see that that measures the temperature of the incoming fuel. And this is the outlet and this is where your pressure regulator would be to let pressure off. Right, okay, so we have a quick look under here, and what do we see? No connector whatsoever. You see that? Right, so this is our issue. It's not connected. So I'm going to have a quick look at live data and see what the system is telling me it's doing right now. Now, this is a little bit of an educational course. Now, just follow me along with this. Right, so the fuel temperature is saying at 60 degrees centigrade. Because this is a default setting the ECM has put in, this means the vehicle will still run with it disconnected. And the next fault, which is of big relevance, is the topside switch logged as failed pre-injection. This is a terminal failure of the ECM. Right, so this is the ECM in question, and what we're going to do is swap this out. We got another second-hand one, which the same numbers MSB 101183 and reprogrammed it to fit the vehicle and I'm just going to have a look at the DTCs that are on this ECU that have been left which probably there are quite a few so we'll have a look yeah fuel temperature logged well that's the one we've got anyway ambient what you'll find is that all of the sensors here are actually logged as faults now we're presuming this has come with the ECU because the other one isn't reading them Okay, so we'll quickly scroll through these and then we'll clear them. There doesn't seem to be any faults or DTCs that would show that the ECU had a problem, but we'll keep an eye on this. Okay, so we're still in a non-start situation here, and she's cranking over without firing up at all. With this sort of diesel system, it's either going to be electrical or it's going to be fuel-related. Now, we found broken wires, on this wiring, which is actually the uh, CKP, which means crankshaft position. Looking up at the wiring diagram, this goes directly to the ECM, and you can see the wiring colours here. And you'll see that it's actually screened by the heavy insulation there that I'm pointing to now. On this plug, you also have the injector pulse wires, which are yellow. And you have pink wires there with black stripes on them. They are signal wires or your 5 volt reference wires to your sensors. What happened, reaching down to find the crank position sensor, the plug actually broke off. So this is a problem. This is the only sensor that doesn't have a backup strategy on this engine. If it fails, the engine will stop running and fail to start. I'll explain this later in another tutorial. Basically, you can check this when the vehicle's not running with ohms. It should be about 1300 ohms or 1 1.3 or somewhere about killer ohms. The resistance in this, which has two output wires, is okay. Live data, even with cranking the engine, you can see the RPM is at zero. If the ECM doesn't register an RPM, it will not engage the fuel pump, which means it won't be pumping diesel to the engine. So our strategy is to fit another plug with an extra piece of wire. And I have a new sensor here so we can check 
For reference, what our resistance will be, okay, so we have uh, two wires here, we can check the resistance. If there's a very high resistance, then it's no good. You can see that it's already been connected there, and you'll also see that there's some loose wires hanging about, which is quite interesting. All right, so basically, I'll do a resistance test with an ohm meter, okay. My ohm meter is no different from something that you'd have in your workshop, other than the fact it has other facilities. But hang on, I need a hand here to hold this while I check the resistance. Now, if you look at the resistance here, that will come up at 1.3 or 1.27, something like that. Yeah, okay, that's 1.27 kilograms, which is a good sensor. Well, it should be because it's brand new. Okay, so some faults don't actually show up as DTC straight away, and I did actually notice this before when I first met this vehicle, like about six months ago, there actually wasn't any power to the MAF sensor. Right, so somewhere along here, one of these wires will be the 5 volt reference wire, which we're not going to look at. We are going to look at the hot wire supply, which is a 12 volt. It's a constant 12 volt to keep the hot wire powered. Now that has no power whatsoever. Okay, you can see that. Now if we look at the wiring diagram, we'll see that it has a fuse and the fuse supplies four different items. So we can see here that we have throttle EGR, modulator EGR, which has been disconnected anyway. We have the mass flow um, air sensor and the solenoid for the wastegate control of the turbo. Now this is going to make a difference to the vehicle running. So we look at the description, we have fuse 2, not link 2, fuse 2 in the engine compartment fuse box. Which we look at F2, fuse 2, 15 amp fuse, and then next to F1, 30 amp fuse, which is ECM related. Okay, so we're going to test this fuse now. And it doesn't matter what multimeter you have, this happens to be a uh, graphing multimeter. You can see that's jumped up to 12 volts. This is on fuse 1, we know we have a power reading. And then on fuse 2 we have the in, and then on the out, yeah, nothing. So the fuse has blown. Just to confirm that, this is a visual blown fuse. So what we have now is a reading of 12 volts to the mass airflow, 12 volts supply to the hot wire. This, however, will not be the cause of the engine not starting. Okay, right, so it's your turn. It doesn't matter whether you actually do know TD5s quite well, or you're a novice to any of the type of systems. This is a time to ask questions and to give suggestions on what we can look at and what we can test to get this vehicle up and running again. So leave your comments and questions in either YouTube on the video below or if you're watching this on Facebook, on Facebook as well. Okay, so until the next fortnight, because we'll be doing the Defender hopefully next week, we'll film some of the suggestions that you have.